thank you for joining me here at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura and today I am sharing my favorite books that are over 500 pages. So these favorite books videos is a series I've been doing. I have an episode for my favorite books that I've read twice, my favorite books that are under 300 pages, my favorite books about addiction and recovery, and now today's video. And I chose over 500 pages because I feel like a book that's over 500, that page count is one that when I see that I'm definitely a bit intimidated by that, right? And I know it will be a bigger time investment. And that's why for the other video I chose under 300 pages because I feel like a book that's you know under 300 pages is just very unintimidating and like okay you know I can do that even if I don't end up liking it at least it's short kind of a thing whereas yeah over 500 pages that is an undertaking and so to help you filter out what books what big books are worth your time I thought I would share some of my favorite big books today and let's just kick things right off with Stephen King of course how could I not include a Stephen King book because he is known for being a bit long-winded at times and I have not read some of his bigger books I mean it I think it and the stand are like his two biggest books and I have not read either one of those but let's not sell 11 22 63 short because this one is 850 pages which is plenty long <laughs> plenty thick but again this one is well worth your time and I've said this before but if you do not like horror or scary books this is a great Stephen King book to read so that you can get a taste of why people like him so much because honestly like yeah he's great at writing, writing horror and and making you scared or grossed out but he also is great at characters and that's one of the reasons why I love his books is I think he has great character development and so this book is about a guy I forget his name now but he goes back in time to stop the Kennedy assassination so it is about time travel he arrives in the past in 1958 so he has a few years to just wait around until it gets time and so it's about his time living in the past and he starts working at the school and he falls in love and so like this whole middle section of the book is just very wholesome and endearing and I just loved it and the beginning of the book too you know you have some events that take place in Derry Maine and that part when he goes back in the past to Derry to prevent this guy from murdering some people that part is the most you know Stephen King-esque I guess you could say because we're dealing with this violent guy who's you know trying to kill his family essentially and so he is trying to the main character is going back to stop that from happening. But yeah, and then like the last third of the book, I would say is when we really get into the JFK stuff. And I personally hadn't known very much about JFK or Lee Harvey Oswald. And I found that really interesting too, like from a historical perspective, but just the story itself, the characters, the time travel aspect I thought was really well done. And yeah, this is well worth the page count. And Stephen King books for me, one of the reasons I also like them is because like they tackle some complex issues some serious issues, but he does it in a way where it doesn't feel like super dense and hard to read, right? Like I feel like his books are very digestible. This might be a long book, but I felt like it was um, like an easy one to read and one I looked forward to reading. And then we have Blonde by Joyce Carol Oates. So this is my Franklin Library edition. I would like to get a first edition copy, but for now this is my Franklin Library edition, but Blonde by Joyce Carol Oates. So this is a fictional biography of Marilyn Monroe and even though it's fictional like there is some truth to it but she chose to do it the fictional route which I really like because there's so much about Marilyn Monroe Norma Jean that we just don't know <laughs> and so she just kind of fills in the blanks and you know makes up conversations that you know probably didn't happen or like we don't know for sure what was said so she just creates her own version of what happened you know throughout her life throughout Marilyn Monroe's life and yeah this is such an undertaking to write a book like this about some someone is iconic as a Marilyn Monroe and someone also who just has a lot of controversy around her as well like with her death and everything but I thought she did a fantastic job this book by the way this particular edition is 738 pages but depending on the edition you get I've seen it like in the 800 page count and it is not available on audiobook so if you're trying to find it the only version is an abridged version and it's only eight hours so that is like like a third of this book because this book an audiobook would be like I don't know 40 hours or something crazy maybe that long but it would be very long yeah this one I do have conflicted feelings about it because it is tough to read at times and it can be gross at times and just how sexualized and manipulated and abused Marilyn Monroe was is hard to read having said that it is wonderfully written and it is honestly just like an amazing book a phenomenal book and it was easy for me to put it down and to take my time reading it because it was so heavy but having said that it was still one I would recommend just be aware of the content because it can be so heavy and difficult to read but Joyce Carol Oates is an amazing writer though she, she's so poetic and just yeah just amazing so vivid and I personally am a big fan of Marilyn Monroe so I also enjoyed reading 
about her life, even if it is fictionalized. And so I think for the right person, this is one that's worth reading. I there's like, I wouldn't just broadly recommend it to anybody because of the content and the potential trigger warnings. So for that, I would say to just make sure you're you're okay with reading a book like this. But overall, it is one I would highly recommend. And then we have East of Eden by John Steinbeck. This book is 600 and two pages. And yeah, this is my favorite John Steinbeck book. I've read, I don't know how many of his books I've read, maybe like four of his books. I want to read more, but he's an incredible writer. Again, just so vivid. He just brings the world to life, amazing characters. And East of Eden is like this epic family saga. And I love books that are just like a family saga. And then he also has a lot of biblical parallels and symbolism, which I find that really interesting as well. It is called East of Eden after all. And we have our main character named Adam and his brother. There's a guy named named something with a C, like to be similar to Cain and Abel kind of a thing. So it's like Caleb or something instead of Cain. And then uh, his own children and then his wife, who is like the antagonist of this book. And she is like a psychopath who, uh, yeah, is very cold, but very intriguing. And even though having a villain be a psychopath is kind of a cliche, it is very well done here in this book. And yeah, like I said, all of these books are big, but all of them are worth your time. And this was one where maybe the first bit, I don't know, less than a quarter of the way through, maybe I was just kind of making my way through. But once we hit the quarter mark from there on, like I just did not want to put this book down and I absolutely loved it and I highly recommend it. Speaking of family sagas, sometimes a great notion is kind of a family saga, less so than East of Eden now that I think about it, but it still is kind of a family saga of sorts. But Ken Kesey, this one won for best book of 2022. So I uh, highly recommend. And this one too is over 600 pages, 600 and 28 pages. The audiobook for this one, by the way, is really good. I went back and forth between reading and listening to it, so I would highly recommend the audiobook. But we follow the Stamper family who has their own family drama, but on top of that, they are also like looked down on by the community because there is a strike going on that the whole community is participating in, except for the Stampers. And since the Stampers aren't participating in this strike, the whole town is mad at them because the strike is doing nothing because the Stamper family is still working and the Stamper family is just this whole clan. It's a huge group of them. And so you have the drama going on within the town plus the drama going on within the family and yeah I just loved getting to know this family they were like such distinct characters some of whom I will just never forget because they were just so vivid in my mind and with a longer book you just get to spend so much time with these people and get to know them so well and they just felt so real and I just love the plot I love how it starts I love how it ends <laughs> like I have very few complaints about this book and overall just you should definitely read it Kesey is known for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which isn't a book I would highly recommend, but sometimes a great notion. This is the one more people should be talking about. Like Cuckoo's Nest, yeah, I have my episode for it and it has its merits, but this is the Ken Kesey book that people should be reading and people should be talking about more so than Cuckoo's Nest. On to another book I've talked about a fair amount on this channel, and this is Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre was also in my episode for books I have read twice, because I've read Jane Eyre twice. And obviously page count depends on the edition, like I said, but this one is 540 pages. But yeah, Jane Eyre is amazing. Charlotte Bronte, it is a classic. I'm sure it's one of those books that has just never been out of print. I don't know for sure on that, but I think it's one of those books that just is continually being reprinted. And people love it still all these years later for a reason. You should read it. It's amazing. If you're a man or a woman, you should read it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like you have the romance with Mr. Rochester, but it is just so much more than that. It is about Jane, obviously, and she is an orphan. And we find out about her life as she lives with her aunt. And then from there, she goes to a boarding school which is very strict. And then from there, she becomes a governess. And then from there, there is drama with Mr. Rochester. And so she doesn't stay a governess for too long because then other things happen. And then you have the romance, like I said, and there's just so much to this book. And I love the character of Jane. And this book is just so atmospheric as well. And the descriptions are amazing and just so vivid. And it is one that I have read twice, like I said, and I plan on reading it a third time at some point because I just really, really love it. <laughs> Highly, highly recommend. Last but not least, certainly not least, because this is the biggest book of the bunch. This is over 1,000 pages. It is 1,016 pages. That is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas, or Alexander Dumas, I think is the technical, the correct way because he's French. Anyway, this one, I feel like everybody knows about this book, even if you haven't read it. Is it, of course, one of the most classic tales of revenge? Edmond Dantes is sent to prison by these three men who are conspiring against him, and he's in prison for like 
20 or 30 years, a crazy long time. And then when he gets out, because spoiler alert, he escapes the prison. And when he gets out, he finds this buried treasure. He changes his name to the Count of Monte Cristo and he enacts his revenge on these three men, one of whom has married his fiance and they have a kid together. And so it is just a great revenge story. And I love the ending and I just love the whole experience too. There are like a lot of side stories we get, which I feel like a lot of big books, one of the reasons they're bigger is because they do focus so much on the characters that we get these backstories to a character who maybe isn't a key character, but we just, every character is so fleshed out, essentially, <laughs> no matter how big or small their role, relatively speaking. And I love books that, that do that. So uh, I love getting to know the characters, the more the better in most cases. And this one is just so well written. Again, it is a classic for a reason. So many people list it as like one of their most favorite books of all time. And again, this is another book where maybe in some ways you're biased because when you spend so much time reading a book, I feel like that's almost a guarantee you are going to like it a lot because you spent so much time with it, right? And to finish it alone is just such an accomplishment and you just feel so proud once you finish a big book. But on top of that, on top of the accomplishment it feels to finish a book like this, it also is just an amazing book. Great characters, of course. Yeah, I just love the whole journey from when he's Edmond Dante's to his time in the prison to his time as the Count, of course. And it's amazing and you should read it. I've only read this one once. Actually, I read the abridged version when I was uh, like 12 or something. I was kind of young. Like it's not inappropriate for a 12 year old, but I think just the writing style in some sense was just too advanced <laughs> for a kid to be reading. But so I read the abridgment when I was younger and then I finished, read the whole thing when in like 2019. And I do want to read it a second time, but it's obviously a big undertaking. So I've, I've been intimidated when it comes to rereading this one because of the length, but I want to get over that and reread it anyway. And if you have not read this at all, don't be intimidated and just go ahead and dive in and read this and experience it and find out why people love it so much. And that wraps it up for my favorite books that are over 500 pages. Comment down below what your favorite book is that is over 500 pages. Comment down below if you have read any of these. Yeah, I guess that wraps it up. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my other favorite books video. I will need to think of what my next favorite books category will be. Maybe like my favorite books written by woman. I think that actually, yeah, I just thought of that and I like that idea. So maybe that'll be my next one. Favorite books written by woman. But anyway, thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.